Hello everyone and welcome back to round seven of the Bochum Regionals. Um, we have a quite interesting matchup for you now. Uh, one deck that is uh, is a staple in the meta, uh, Owen Kammermann with his trusty Pikazek. Um, yeah, it's a popular deck, everyone knows it, but the other one is really interesting. Yeah, I'm actually going to wait a moment before so talking too much about it, because they're yeah, still waiting on the our players headsets, don't have the headsets um, on, so... I do really enjoy the fact that we're even this deep in the... Like, not just the day, right? Like, round seven is late in the day. Yeah, it's really but late. But on top of that, we're late in a format. And normally, like, what happens with most formats is really early they on... They get figured you out. out. Yeah, you know what the play is, right? You, well, you know, like, uh, toward the end, you're like, right, Mewtwo, pretty good. God of War, yeah, it's, it's all right. Yeah. Um, and then you've got like your, your ADPs and all this. and you, like It's really nice to still see that there's enough space in this format that people go, no, 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 no. We still have niche decks left that are like unexplored. Like one thing I'm thinking of, which could be pretty good probably if the format would continue like mm -hmm. three more months, is like the Roxy Persian yeah, checkmate sure. you got build. Like so we've got the Roxy decks have come in in the last couple of regionals mm -hmm. um, over in Kuala Lumpur um, in particular. But then we also have things like the... Um, well <laughs> we've had Fossils on stream, <laughs> yeah, which is still doing Oof. well. Tangrowth on stream, doing well. Um, we just had a Pikachu Zekrom, which was playing Dangerous Drill. Dangerous uh, Drill. Three, uh, three Absol. A lot of dark Pokemon, like Hoopa as well. Also doing well. And we've got another one coming up. Which is going to involve a lot of me thinking and counting cards in my head, um, because it involves involves a certain pink dog boy, uh, Gramble. Um, just still waiting yes. on the players. Um, I don't want to give too much away before they have the headsets on, but yes. it's uh, it's a spicy little matchup we've got coming up. Yes, they're actually putting them on right now, so yeah, we can come on, put them on. Finally, I can see you put them on. There we go. <laughs> um, so as we as we cut into, um, we can see uh, that the the match is going to be yes. between. Switches Switch, uh, between <laughs> Owen and Adrian, and yeah, Granbull has been like it has been present in the meta before rotation, yeah, a lot, and then it went away obviously because it lost like the whole engine was well, gone. It, it, as soon as you lose Ultra Ball and like half of your discard and options, also Instruct or Anguru, yeah, it's like hmm, this is much harder, but it's back, and this time it features Zip Striker and Shedinja. And Ooh. somehow I was told there's a way of it looping and it never really running out. And uh, it honestly sounds like witchcraft. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, it's going to be I a agree. lot of me. It's honestly going to be a lot of me going. How on earth does he get to zero ca hand cards now? <laughs> um, as we get underway, Adrian flipping over a <laughs> a snubble. It is a snubble. Okay, yeah, from <laughs> the de Detective Pikachu uh, expansion set. Uh, yeah. And yeah, Grumble with the all-out attack. In case you forgot, it's 30. And if you have no cards in hand, it's actually 160. And yeah, there's the Snobble on screen um, with Paralyzing Gaze and Bite. Like, not really that important. But it has 60 HP, which is important since uh, the setup supporter Adrian probably relies on, or that he relies on, is the Professor Elm's Lecture, which can only grab Pokemon with 60 HP or less. So yeah, he's setting up all his basics. Ditto. Still good in the stack. Still, well, uh, as soon as you're playing more than... Even if you're even kind considering of, yeah. playing a second evolution line, you go, well, Ditto goes in, right? Because it just gives me that flexibility I think times. I think if there would be one tournament where you cut Ditto, it would be right now because there's so many spell attacks, mm -hmm. so many Baby Blastephalon putting four damage counter, so many Tina Chomp going with linear attack, doing 40. So, yeah. Actually, he's searching out the, the Mew as well, probably... Because yeah, he doesn't really know what's coming and wants to protect his bench like, yeah, from I mean, turn one. I mean, normally at this point you say that they've probably been sat near each other on the table, so they have a vague idea. And in the case of <laughs> though, <laughs> Here's though, the though, though, though Owen's uh, response to the Ninkada was he had no idea. <laughs> um, like if, if you know they're playing something like Pikarom, you can preemptively go right. I'm probably going to need this. Yeah, because I'm just going to bench it. It's fine. It's going to come in useful at some point, as we see a Volkner um, for Owen. And he has a couple of awkward prize cards. He has double communication prize and a radar, so getting his Pokemon is going to be a bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, the prize cards for Adrian aren't too bad. He has one of his three Zeb Strikers prized, but that he can live with it, I think. This, I mean, this has all sorts of stuff in it. I just... I actually need to take a one closer look at the deck list. Well, but there's also... So as long as... With this, there's also a Dusk Skull. 
I have no idea which. It is. I I think I think I know because there's the the new dust call is. Um, it, when, when it's on your bench, you can activate its ability and discard two cards from your hand and then search your deck for a card that evolves from the Dusk Call and put it onto it. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, there's nothing in his deck that evolves from Dusk Call. So he can just discard two cards for free okay. every turn. Which is what he wants to do, because he wants to have no cards. And fail the search. And yeah. That's what he wants to, to do. Yeah. I mean, it's a very interesting way of doing it, but cool. I think I think the loop that you were talking about might involve some sort of Brox Grid Diantha shenanigans. Oh, wow, okay. Which is like... Well, I'm going to learn a thing or two in this matchup. Yeah, me too, me too. Um. That's just what I'm getting from like having a first glance at the list and uh, just seeing... Um, yeah, so the the Duskull seems like... It seems like it's made for something like this. Like, discard your hand down to zero. Mm -hmm. um, it's It's pretty good. Uh -huh. um, for so for a deck like this, as we see uh, Jirachi being combed back into the deck, he's n he knows that it's going to be an awkward matchup. But he's still playing Zeps the Zapdos, so we're kind of going real old school <laughs> almost here, where it's like <laughs> Pika Rom Zapdos, um, which was kind of what this was played basically this time last year, like yeah. back in January last year. This was the the main way of playing uh, with Pika Rom with, with the Zapdos, but you have to be able to do it because you have to trade yeah. cleanly yeah, or you just lose really early on Zapdos trades like still trades really well so well, just he can, retreat uh, he, and he's got to take out a couple of snubble quickly but if he, as long as he can do this he's fine like mm -hmm. he, he can't lose um, it's actually seeing the Stellar Wish you're grabbing Thunder Mountain pretty good yeah he wants to if the snubbles evolve eventually he wants to be follow it's he wants to follow it up with the it's a shame bits. that he attached already because he could have just Thunder Mountain and had it for free. Yeah, move the attachment but, somewhere else, but I think you want to kind of preserve the hits on on yeah. the pickers uh, because they give up three prizes. And if uh, Adrian just gets one hit, would get one hit in right now. Yeah, as we see, Rosa Rosa also pretty pretty good at uh, supporting those one prize attackers, getting you the energy, getting you the Pokemon, like everything you want to chain, yeah. um, chain your one prizes together and. Helping you just set up so well. Um, well, it's it's a tool that means that like inherently single prize decks tend to be evolution decks, which means they need more parts. Rosa lets you just go. Okay, my tiny basic with actual low HP, as opposed to some of the basics we have to deal with in tag teams, yeah. got knocked out. Well, that's fine. I don't care. I'll just get what I wanted anyway. Thanks. Um, as we see the Ninkada in the active. Um, so the, playing the Shininja, which will deny prize cards when mm. taking the KO. Also, they're speaking about Stalls? denying prize cards. <laughs> Everything is in this list. There's, a There's two copies. Yeah, two Lilies Pokedol. Um, yeah, really, really interesting. Actually, there's only one great catcher, which is in the prizes. So Adrian won't have access to Gust for now. Uh, Seems so like a pretty good turn so far. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really good. Well, well um... Another another grand ball. Um, if he yeah, there's the grand ball so if he wants yeah, to he set has it up. The, the snubble, so he's going to use the vessel of life ability, yes. which basically just says discard. You know, basically knock it out. You know, discard the Ninkada, attach it to something else as a tool. Um, and then one less prize card gets taken. Yeah, if the Pokemon gets which knocked out. Which um, one less than one, zero. I'm yeah. good at my maths. Um, <laughs> and this means that. No, if you can't take prize cards, well, he can just. If, if Adrian's in a position where he can infinitely do, like if there's this apparent loop where he can do 130 every, uh, you know, every turn, and you'd never take a prize card, that seems pretty good, to be honest. Yeah. That seems like a thing that I want to play. Oh, actually, I think Owen is. Um, yeah, it puts it certainly like one prize decks put a lot of pressure on the, on the tag team decks to take knockouts early, but Owen has some way to deal with it. Like the judge is pretty pretty good because. Um, Adrian wants to get his hand down to zero mm -hmm. every turn, and the judge just puts four cards into his hand. So, like, that's uh, some an unusual way yeah. in which hand disruption well, is again, useful. Pika Judge with Zapdos was this time last year. Yeah. Has he been told that we're in a new year? It's not just January 2019. Because <laughs> he's playing Pika Judge. There's four copies of Judge in his list. Oh, no. it's, it's the original Pika Judge style thing. It. <laughs> it's magic. It's, so like it's time spam traveling. Spam judge every single turn and then full blitz and you're good to go. Yeah. As we it, it really is time traveling to go, right, well, you have four cards, but also <laughs> I hit you. Four cards and I hit you. And if you don't draw it, then... Yeah. 
Um, yes, actually, the Zapdos takes the knockout on the Pokedol. No prize cuts are being taken. And yeah, now Adrian uh, will be able to respond. He actually draws, has another uh, fairy energy in okay, his hand. Okay, there's a so resource management around Guru, so th there is definitely some form of infinite yeah. looping here. Um, but I think, I think uh, actually someone who, like, I th back in the day at, I think it was Harrogate last year, Tord played resource management in his Grand Bull list. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, like, that's what I remember for sure. So it's not something completely new, but it's really, really unusual. And, um, yeah, it's crazy to see well, it it's kind work of necessary again. Because you play so many cards that are, like, insta-play, get rid of them. Yeah. That you kind of have to burn some of your options on turns that you don't want to burn them and you need them yeah. later. If you, for example, draw into two energy, you just have to discard them. And there's, like, if we have, we don't have a lot of ways to get stuff back, so. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we now see the disc goal, so. And there's a sprint. And if he, o yeah, he now he no only needs to draw one playable card of yeah. the sprint. And then uh, he's good to go and can attack for the 160. I don't know if he got it. He there's got a, a fairy charm. If he got a fairy charm, just chuck it down, right? But he also has a judge of his an elm of his own. Well, he doesn't need it now. He's already set up pretty pretty cleanly. He's he's basically got infinite access to. Uh, you know, he can go, grumble, 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 over and over again. Yeah. Um, Just chain them as efficiently as possible. Oh no! Actually, he needs to get rid of two cards. So. Spoke too soon. Uh, uh, no, it's, once you turn, you may discard three cards. It's three. Yeah, it's three. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Okay, I was right. Well, that's basically My bad. sprint, <laughs> find a, a card that you want, <laughs> and throw the rest away. Yeah. I thought it was two, but three, yeah, makes 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 sense. <laughs> like, the ability is pretty good, so. <laughs> Even the judge is like, yo, what? You Give discard me that. three cards. <laughs> but also, look at your deck just to make sure. Make sure that. Oh, there's nothing there that evolves from Dusk. How unfortunate. <laughs> 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 you can see Elman going, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I kind of like that when, like, this is a really cool combo. Um, using the, the new Dusk Goal just to basically dump your hand. And then Elms, just look at the deck again. Just Probably like, just don't make grab sure, anything. Make sure nothing new appeared in my deck. Um, no? Good. Um, and now being able to take... The KO with his Grumble. Yeah, I, I, I love it. That when was clean. With Grumble, like when you take knockouts, you just go, because you have no <laughs> cards in your hand, you just. It's like, go on then, what are you yeah. going to do? <laughs> Throw them in the air, be like, yeah, all out. <laughs> <laughs> be like, yeah, here you go, I do 160 with my non GX Pokemon. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> yeah, as we see, Thunder Mountain going down. Yeah, Owen need, really needs to start full blitzing now to take one shots because Grumble has 130 HP and, like, Zapdos can't deal with that, even. Like, it, it went down, right? But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Owen basically needs to commit to GX Pokemon now to uh, yeah. take knockouts. Well, Adrian's next turn has to basically involve Gramble, Evolution, Hit, and Snubble. Mm -hmm. And is doing that in a way where he has nothing left over. And this is where, th this is yeah. the art. And it, I, honestly, I think it is an art of playing Gramble decks. If you have to be able to map out your turn and also your next turn yeah. in ways that you're like, well, I can probably achieve this and exactly run out. Yeah. Having the Duskull in play, though, makes that much, much easier. Yeah, back in the day, I was like, uh, when, when someone asked me, like, what can I do to get better? I was like, okay, just go on PTCGO ladder and grind Granbull games because you learn so much about sequencing. Yeah. You will get better eventually. It's just sequencing your cards. Uh, even if you lose a bunch, it doesn't matter because this deck teaches sequencing like no other deck because you get instantly super punched if you mess up just mm -hmm. once. So, yeah. Um, with the Macargo and the Oranguru, it was even harder, but I'm, s I'm uh, excited to see like how this works out. And yeah, it's uh, really so interesting to see. Going um, in, like yeah, full blitz. Full blitz, and it's just going to go boom. Yeah. Let's Attached go. to right Raichu, yeah. Raichu's ready. Raichu takes another nice clean KO. So now now it gets it gets real, like how... how um, what, what will the response from Adrian look like? Uh, there's already a Snowball, so that's a good start, I guess. Yep. That's one of the cards he's going to need. I mean, the other one is a reset stamp, so it kind of hurts to throw that in a bin, but it's okay. Yeah, he's just going to discard it. He's going to Snowball to the bench. I think the last card is Diantha in his hand. Ooh, that's pretty good. I, I think. I'm not that's sure. That's pretty good. Yeah, that would be really, really nice here. Uh, I mean, that basically completes the combo for you, right? Yeah. 
You just go down the. I don't know well, if you even would like to sprint then, but maybe to just see some cards. But maybe you just hold it. Yeah, they well, stay in. If there's ever an infinite loop where he, where he doesn't let them take prize cards, it makes sense for him to try and thin his deck, right? Because these loops. Yeah, he's just really going all out. Involve. Okay. Like there's, there's an argument to sprint because if you want to get to the loop, that basically requires a zero size deck, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then as soon as you know, you have to thin it there. But no, just going to go 130 and go. All right, come I mean, at me. You don't have to set up the loop if you can just win before, yep. right? You yeah, just go. Okay, I'm just going to see where this goes. Um, yeah, Adrian knows what Pika Rom is able to do, and yeah, he he's, he knows he's not too too threatened because he has to mew. His uh, he won't be disrupted uh, like too heavily. Owen can only knock out the active Granbo because there's no gust effects that can actually target the. Is he playing custom catcher? I no, don't he's think not. So. No, he's I, not. I didn't have a look. No, I he's not playing custom catcher. So yeah, there's no way to target down uh, Adrian's bench, and then <laughs> the snowball will just be safe to come up on the next turn. And more importantly, I think uh, Owen can't get rid of that Mew, which means. His tag vault GX is basically pointless, like we saw in the last yeah. game. Like literally in the last game when we uh, when we saw Pika Rom versus Malamar, it just doesn't do anything. But he's going right now. Have four cards. You're gonna have to. F God of, I'm not gonna just let you top deck play a card, take a KO. The thing is, do something. The two of the cards were like cards he actually wanted there's on like his next turn. There's a pal pad in there as well, which means yeah. he can put the dance <laughs> back, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, I mean even if you give him cards, it's still you're giving him cards to work yeah. with. So it's like it sounds you like lose a bad idea, right? Way. <laughs> it's like hmm, no matter what I do, he could, well also with the access to two sprints, which means he can just discard and draw four, mm -hmm. and then discard three. It doesn't matter if you give him four cards. He'll find a way. Um, as we see, a Rosa again. Yes. Oh, the shrine is. Uh, the is shrine's really gonna be huge. really big. Cause yeah. First of all, it clears the Thunder Mountain, but it also just starts ticking away slowly. And, and if there are five Jake's Pokemon in play, you really feel the pressure that's yeah. put on my Which shrine. Which also, like, just like logically, when you had to put that many dice down. Yeah, <laughs> like, you'd be oh. like, oh no, oh no, oh, oh no. Oh dear me, <laughs> um, I've used all of my dice collection and uh, we're going to get KO'd in a minute. Um, so we see a Rosa for... Not sure. It was. I think he already has an energy in hand, so he doesn't yeah. need to grab that one, probably. Well, again, and this is the nice thing, is because a lot of these supports they're now up to. Yes. Which means that he doesn't need to take anything he knows he can't and won't use that turn. Yeah. He can go, snubble. And this thing, and this thing. Um, so he actually grabs the communication and wants to... Oh, yeah, oh yeah, he can also attack with the Hoopa at some point. Because it's still, like, it deals um, uh, at least a bit of damage. And with the 160 from the Granbo, it's still a two-shot. Mm -hmm. Even if the Hoopa just puts down, like, I think it's 70 damage right now. Um, so, yeah, yeah. sure. But <laughs> <laughs> and he just flips it and be like, "Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting." You can tell he's back. used. To, like, again, this is not a deck you turn up without practicing, and yeah. you can tell he's practicing because he's just like, "How to play cards with nothing else in hand?" Flip, <laughs> just drop it onto the table. Go, I win. <laughs> um, I can attack now. Yay! But those three abilities in play, he's already kind of set up, and this isn't like a nice setup t uh, to have. Of okay, but this is no. I don't need to evolve next turn. Yeah. I don't. That's one less thing I have to find, and you can just yeah. hit, hit pressure. He can then, you know, it's a turn off having to constantly dig and evolve, which means that he can kind of set up for other plays because there are other options in this list. We've seen the shrine, we've seen the polka dot option. Yes. There's a fairy charm ability, which I'm assuming is for the Mewtwo matchup, which I guess is probably yeah, pretty seems bad otherwise. Pretty annoying for Mewtwo to work around this. Um, so we see, yeah, switch into the Jirachi, just get another Stellar Vision. Mm, yeah, no. I'm not even. I mean, that sure. sure. What Owen would like, what 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 his game plan will become now? Yeah, um, it's going to be take a KO, but you know you're losing three prize cards, yeah. right? Like, yeah. unless no, let, well, no, with the energy switch, he can um, if he's st Thunder Mountain still in play, right? So he can still take. He could take a KO with a clean. With um, yeah, with the clean Pikachu and Zekrom, but you would assume that uh, Adrian is playing some so sort of gust effect. I mean, Owen doesn't yeah, know sure. that uh, Adrian's only Great Catcher's prize currently. He, yeah, there's actually two. Uh, there's only one or two. Two. One. Uh, it's two on the other list. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but you would assume that, like, he has to play some gust and he will get it but out but of the prize even, yeah, eventually. This is my issue, right? Is that it's. 
if it's prized, uh, you don't know it's prized, right? Yeah. But here, if he takes three prize cards, Adrian could take it. By presenting the clean one first, he's, you're not letting him draw extra cards for turn. Yes. So there's a, there's a weird thing of like maybe going into the clean one just prevents it from being a problem. But you see poker gear for the arms and just sprint it away. And yeah, probably you want to play Rosa this turn, or maybe I'm not sure. Well, he uh, needs to get. There are a lot of Pokemon in this discard pile already. Yeah, so, so he's taking a KO with the Hooper this turn, right? I think there's enough damage already. So how many abilities are there? There are three. Three so abilities. So Hooper's doing 70 damage. So 160 plus 70 is 230. Th so it's still st it's still short. Yeah. So there's no way of taking a KO on the active this turn. And instead, having to yeah, maybe he wants to just recover back some yeah. resources or Diantha or Rosa. Mm. Or yes, he, he kind of needs to snub. He needs to snubble. Yeah. Otherwise, he has no attacking option next turn. He doesn't have any like stage one like or like basic attacker other than the Hooper. Yeah. So in this case, he kind of needs to grab it now. Um, you could actually Hooper and then use Mew. To take the KO. To just put some damage counter well, on um, the board. Because I think we're just short on the, the Pikachu's uh, on the right you right you. Yes. So that means that actually he could go um, Hooper this turn. Yes. Into the. Um, like. Me, me, uh, so Hooper into another Gramble on something. Mm -hmm. And then you might get the damage counts to line up that you can go Psy Power, blah, blah, blah. Psy Power plus Shrine is actually a lot of damage. Yeah, so. it really does add up. Uh, as we are having a little discussion right now, I'm not 100% sure what the issue is, but um. we'll get it resolved eventually. Um, yeah, so like we have been seeing a lot of one price decks actually be um, really successful today. Like, uh, obviously you have your Malama decks, but like Malama is not really scaring those one price uh, decks away as expected. Um, when I'm thinking about one price decks, I'm always thinking like, can this beat Malamar? Like Malamar mm -hmm. is your go-to mm -hmm. one price deck, which is like it's kind of good that uh, there is something that exists to keep those one price decks in check, which otherwise would counter the tech teams really hard. Like Bab uh, Babel Cephalon is like really good. Oh, the players resume, so yeah. and whatever. <laughs> um, Maybe I can finish no, my point no, later. But, th but that's the thing, right? Is it, like, but th the problem is, is this has a very different play style mm -hmm. to the other one prize option that you think about. Like, yes, it still does 130, it's the same damage amount, but the way it goes about doing it, instead of it being a get the board, don't care about the rest, this is com the complete opposite. It doesn't really care too much about its board state. It wants to just go, well, can I make my combo happen every turn? And the, the way you disrupt that, completely different game plans. As we see the Mew promote to the active, so uh, Adrian is speeding up his play right now. Yep. Um, going for another Dusk Call. Uh, no, he's just going to come. Just come it back in. Yeah, sure. Well, that's the other nice thing you can do, right? You can just put it back. Reduce your hand size. Yeah, there's, uh, there's another Snubble. Sprint. Sprint your cards away. Oh, there's... The Shrine's pretty nice here. I think you play it, right? I think you got to... Yeah. yeah. For not only are you kicking the stadium, but now this, this single turn... This hand is so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. Just print it away. <laughs> I was like, okay, he can come for something that he wants, but no. Okay, he, he, wa he really wanted the Brock's grit this yeah, turn, I guess. I think this turn he really needs it because he's basically out of his Grambles. Mm -hmm. Most of his fairy energy is already in the discard pile. Um, like His attacking options here are pretty limited. So he's going to hopefully attach Psy Power. I think takes the knockout now on the um, on the benched uh, Raichu Raichu. But he actually he doesn't need to take the knockout this turn. He can no, just he could wait. Just chill. I, because he doesn't have the energy just yet, and I think he has no sprints left. Yeah, so. he has now used two uh, sprints. Brock's Grit, a card that was reprinted recently. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not th well, not that recently, but like reprinted um, and put it back in. Uh, it was previously legal uh, a couple of years back. Uh, yeah. One of the probably it's the best one of the, my preferred supporters for recovery of resources. It's yeah. very very strong. I, yeah, it's. It feels like uh, b before rotation, it felt kind of uh, it was a little bit too efficient, but now it has fallen out of favor almost completely. Mm -hmm. um, people just tend to just if you want uh, two of a certain Pokemon or more of a certain Pokemon, you just play more. Mm -hmm. um, you don't play like 
Pokemon Recovery because Pokemon Recovery on a supporter always feels kind of clunky. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, back in the day it was like really, really efficient and um, like with the Shedinja deck, it really abused Brock Scratch. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, that's why it sometimes it felt a little bit uh, like unfair when your op opponent could loop infinite loop Shedinjas. And I think Adrian's trying to do something kind of similar. Those lines, yeah. um, like He's attacking, uh, but like he has the option to pivot into another strategy. Uh, so we'll maybe. see now. Do we have electric power? Well, I mean, why not? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you probably will take one shots for the rest of the game without e power anyway. You may as well so thin it um, yeah. from the deck. As we see, it's double promoted. So we have fairy. Do mm -hmm. we have a Pokemon? I don't think you actually want to sprint a lot like this turn because you know there are a lot of fairy energies in your deck and you don't want to sprint into too many of them. Yeah. But also you need to recover your uh, supporter, like your Diantha, to recover your Brock's Grid at some point. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, he's going to go to game two there. Yeah, um, I think um, Adrian lost too many resources as we like talked about in the beginning. If you just... Rec recklessly sprint away your resources and you just draw happen to draw the cards in the wrong order yeah. um, it's really unfortunate and you can't recover as fast as you have to discard your cards to keep attacking mm -hmm. well th and that's actually uh, uh, the trick with the deck is the balance of like trying to go through it quickly to get to your combos but also and get to zero cards but not so quickly that you have to wind up throwing everything back. Yes. And the problem is is that Owen, like for, from Adrian's perspective, Owen had a very clean board, had lots of tag teams in play that he was not one hit KOing. He yeah. prized a great catcher. Like if he managed a great catcher that uh, like earlier and didn't prize it, yeah. could take the three prizes, suddenly he, he probably don't scoop there, right? Because you still have like, like still maybe some way to take the last three prizes. Yeah, I, I see that. I see that. Um, maybe he will set up better this time, and mm -hmm. uh, or like uh, draw the cards be in in a better order this time. But I think his start in the last game was kind of good, so I'm not really 100% sure um, what like he can improve when it comes to maybe playing the cards or um, yeah the way the way he plays this matchup. I'm really not sure. But also, we haven't seen Grenville in a long time, so... Yeah, it's it's a deck that, like well, like, like we said, it lost basically the Everything. entire engine. Like, the Oranguru went, yeah. and then you've got to play the slightly clunkier version, which is Ep Striker. Um, you lost your Ultra Ball, which basically discard two cards for free if you really need to, but yeah. also set yourself up if you... Well, you do need to, um, to set yourself up. So it was a really kind of annoying loss for the deck to go from the kind of actually having all the tools it wanted to basically none. Yeah. Um, as we see the prize cards, there's nothing particularly important prized um, in either case. The stadium now that uh, Win played, we actually spoke about it in the last game. Um, yeah. Is like the search option. The you search play. the stadium nav with Faulkner and then you hope to flip one head yep. and then you get your Thunder Mountain. So that's basically like, yeah, search your for your Thunder Mountain or uh, yeah, Faulkner is really versatile because it also can search for communication and then you get your Coco Prism Star out exactly. of the deck. So it, it, it just gives you another option as opposed to just going kind of, okay, you have to take these things. It's like, yeah. well, if I really need it, I can flip the coin. Like, if I know if I flip this coin, like if, if, like if I flip heads, I don't lose. Yeah. As a result, then you probably take those risks and it just gives you a bigger toolbox to play with. The and problem. then you flip double tails and it's all wasted <laughs> in the end. Yeah. We know how it goes. As you see, like another Elms opening, really nice. Uh, benching the Pokedoll to be, ab to be able to buy more time eventually. Actually, he Adrian is choosing to not bench the Snubble. Is it a Snubble or a Gramble? I think it's a He's snubble. shuffling it way too quick. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a Snubble, but uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he's just going to have a chicken second. Oh, do I judge you? Um, but we're going to see an Electro Magnet. Elec it. Yeah. Electro, um, which is like the, the card that really keeps Pika Rom ticking. Yeah, like, it's huge consistency. Like your turn one now becomes, well, instead of just having like just supporters, I almost always have a way to get to a dead mm -hmm. And then I can Volkner for the thing I really need. And we're, we're good to go. 
Um, there's no real way, like, the only way to get a turn one attack this turn, which would be actually very, very strong if he did. Yeah, um, that like, would be huge. would require an energy switch at this point, because the, um, the attachment and the Picaroma are in the active. But we see an energy switch, but do we but have a no way of... other ways of energy accelerations. Yeah, it's probably... He can he can take it a little bit slower. I mean, it worked out. Yeah. Um, There's no need to rush. Like, again, like Malamar, Granbull's games are inherently not very quick because you have to do 130 at a time. Mm -hmm. like, that's the most damage you can do. And as a result of doing 130 at a time, well, you can't be a quick de deck, which means that the, s the, the quick decks... Like, Picaron has a very explosive start available to it, but it doesn't need it, which means that instead of tr trying to be greedy and dig and aggressive, you can just s take it slow, make a much stronger total board state without yeah. investing the resources. And that's one of the things where they can fall down is actually decks that can take their foot off the gas can really punish it. Also, um, like when uh, like Picaron has a low quote unquote low to 40 HP. So um, it's a lot um, a lot of times it's in range for other tech teams to knock it out. And then uh, sometimes people will overcommit and then you can just punish them by reset stamping them. Mm -hmm. And you also have a lot of ways to influence uh, their price cards, like attack with, maybe attack with uh, and a Zapdos first and then with your tag team and then you go Paralysis with Raichu Raichu stamp power plant to two and then uh, yeah, yeah, your opponent has to draw out of that to uh, continue playing. As we see Pokegear, hoping maybe like to find um, to find a way to get Zip Strikers on board probably yeah. and maybe a Snarble into play. Um, or a Grand Bull interplay. Um, as we see, it was actually a snobble, but he didn't want to bench it <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> that was a quick series of cards. Like, snobble, energy, some striker, don't want the rest. I'll draw three cards. Let's have a look. Uh, four cards. Let's have, let's have a look. We actually see that Owen's already immediately not playing around the Hooper again. Mm -hmm. So, like, again, sometimes this happens like a, a psychological effect. Of, like, by showing the tech option that you have in game one, Sometimes you, you force your opponent to then go, All right, okay, I can't afford the, the, the Dene and the Zero Aura and this because it's just going to take a KO on me. Yeah. But we actually saw that because P uh, Raichu Raichu has so much HP at 260, mm -hmm. that's actually a big deal because it means that the Hooper has to be like doing all of its damage and it's yeah. still, uh, as in like everything has an ability. And if it doesn't, well, it's kind of free. Um, yeah, the, um, I mean, 160 for one energy is like really huge, but uh, it's still not enough in, in a meta where like tech teams have 230, 40, 70 HP. Um, so, yeah, like it feels sometimes it just feels kind of low. Like back in the day when Granbull was like really, really at its prime, you had decks like the Blissephalon and the Gardevoirs, which could be one shot or and choice band. Yeah, and <laughs> also we had Choice Band. Yeah, those were the days. Like, that's what <laughs> made Grumble really, really good. And, uh, yeah. But, I mean, Adrian is 501, so he has been making it work so far. So, um, yeah. So, clearly, it shows that it's uh, possible for Grumble to right. be consistent and be a good deck in the meta. There's now a shit injury in play. It's all. Shedinja or Rangaroo Zip Striker, I remember those days, man. Yeah, that was a just deck for Worlds, right? Like, that was a deck. Yeah. Like, just play the Shedinja <laughs> lock. Um, a lot of my friends were testing it, and it was it was super but fun. Well, actually, if, if you ignore the Gramble on the one end of this board... Yeah. It basically is the same. It's the same list, right? <laughs> uh, also a polka doll, which wasn't legal, like wasn't out at the time, but you totally would play. Yes. Like you, like a hundred percent would play that in the stall list. So it's like it's basically a stall deck, which happens to have a Gramble in it. Um... <laughs> It seems, it seems like we can never like uh, be like we always have to have some kind of stall elements in our game like all the time. Last ga uh, two rounds ago, it was 35 minutes of draw passing. Before that, it was <laughs> Sanders Orangu greens list, and now yeah. <laughs> we uh, have stall elements right here. So, <laughs> so we're just gonna resource manage. Yeah, resource manage three cards back in, and we n we we, n we know and love that tech already. But As we're we going to see, see the, f the four blitz come in. Yes. Guaranteed so this turn because of the escape board on the Jirachi. I think you just 
kind of take you do you want another pokemon to attack with probably at this yeah, point yeah you right? want something to fall with onto i mean you could onto zero aura and just because it's it just 160. Yeah, but it's awkward there because you have to pass the turn right like it's 160 and you can't attack the next turn but you can just retreat and yeah and full blitz it's fine yeah my, i mean uh adrian doesn't play like anything like power plant to shut off zero aura's ability nope. so the only one who plays power plant is owen himself and yeah yeah, as we just see the yeah, he's the five oh one. I don't think he's particularly likely to power plant himself. Um, yeah, so same. <laughs> <laughs> so Pikachu's Zekrom takes the KO and the first prize card for Owen. Um, was not drawn because Shedinja. Yeah, Shedinja so was attached. So fortunately, he doesn't have to work too hard in that situation, and he actually goes for the attach onto the Zoro. Mm -hmm. um, so we see Rosa, perfect supporter right now. Probably you don't grab the energy, only the Snowball and the Trainer. Yeah. And then maybe you sprint, but I don't know if you would like to sprint right there. Probably I mean, not. His hand's fairly flat. I, I, I don't think there was much in it. But then also, he doesn't want anything in it. So it kind of defeats the point. I, I don't know. Like, he doesn't have access right now to a dust goal. To, like, he has to hit four playables or yeah. cards that he can discard. You know, And I don't know if it's something he really wants to try and reach for. Um, so yeah, he's just sprinting in a way. Sure. Last card in hand. Well, I mean, he couldn't play it because yeah. it was an elm. So uh, this is annoying. I think he drew the Brock's grit, which he would prefer not to have to sprint away. Especially also, yeah. Just see the pass over. Um, which is fine with Polkadot in the active buying him a turn. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, Owen can't work around it because you have seen no custom catchers so far. See the communication. Yeah, that that's Fion, there it that's is. Okay, never mind. I spoke too soon. My bad. As we see the Fion come out. Yeah, well, of course you play Fion and Picarom. Why <laughs> not? <laughs> well, so the thing is, is that it's a card that saw a bit of play at the beginning of this format, mm -hmm. then fell out of favor. Um, but it's actually a really nice, simple way around these dull stall decks. Or actually, against most of the stall decks, it means you can pick out something more favorable than, than the Oranguru that they normally present you. Yeah. Um, with the Fion using Whirlpool Suction to force a switch of something onto the bench. I've also talked to some, some other players who, uh, like uh, Robin talked to me the other day, and he was also uh, considering putting Fiona in a Mutalist, for mm -hmm. example. I talked about uh, with him about that, and I really like that, for example, because if your opponent just sends up a Keldeo and doesn't expect the Fion, you, you can just pop the Fion, and then he's forced to switch. Also, it would get the work around the tech perch. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I really like I really it's actually like a super it strong card. For, for that purpose. Uh, I tested it a little bit, and yeah, also it seems to work out for Owen and the Pikazek. So it seems like Fiona's kind of underrated right now. Well, there's actually, there was a period right at the start of the format where it was seen with any deck playing uh, Jirachi, and you'd also th maybe, like, if you expected a lot of stall, uh, you'd also put in a little Cyrus. Because mm -hmm. you can go, well, Jirachi or Fiona in the active, I'll take what I can get. Yeah. Cyrus. Haha. <laughs> Makes Got sense, you. yeah. Um, and actually, in this situation, would actually be super strong because putting those back into the deck, like, that undoes a lot of Adrian's setup. And this is a deck that really, really needs a lot of setup. Yeah, that's true. So and we see yeah, the Brock's Grit Brock's just going that he's taken everything that he can. Um, it does actually specify it has to be, um, I think it's six, seven? Yeah, I think six, but um, yeah, it has to be everything that is in the discard pile that has to go back. So you can't choose, like, up to. Yeah. Um, See, so Polkadot goes under the deck and hides away. And this is actually a much, much better uh, setup because now he doesn't. Like, he's got two Snubble. The Gramble's hitting. Mm -hmm. And he's got, like, energy attached. Like, he's got everything he needs. He only ready. needs the Gramble yeah. uh, on, the, on the falling turn. I mean, he doesn't have Dusk Goal in play, but as soon as the Gramble gets knocked out, he can just. Maybe search for the Dust Goal. There's like he has a lot of outs to it. He has Rosa for the mysterious treasure for the Dust Goal, or Rosa just directly for the uh, for the Dust Goal. So yeah, he can he will work he will be able to work around it, um, and manipulate the cards. And in there's another Fion. Yeah, he gets the Fion back. Fortunately, it doesn't go to the discard pile. It just goes under the deck. Yep. And if you then shuffle, could can be could be anywhere. Yes. Um, but it's actually the biggest issue um, Adrian's going to face is that well, great. I take a KO, but yeah, anything can take the KO now, right? Like, you can just promote the Zero Aura. There's no way Adrian could possibly take this KO. Um, there is actually an argument that he could have played something like an Ability Charm. If he plays the Ability Charm, the Zero Aura can't hit yeah, him. Yeah, that makes um, sense. But he didn't have an op option to do so. <laughs> like that was like, draw Elm, sprint. 
Um, all right, we see There's a shrine. There's Rosa. That's nice. And I think we saw a shrine of punishment as well. Yes, yes, definitely a shrine as well. So. Might just attach that randomly, yes, and then Rosa for the cards that you actually want. Yep. Just the Pokemon and a trainer, probably, like the Grand Bull. And I know, I don't know Something what could be play, good right? here. Oh, Pokedoll makes totally sense. Yeah. Make, makes, makes a lot of sense. I mean, I know Owen's already put the Fiam down saying, well, I'm just going to gust it, but make him use it. Don't just leave it there and like make his life easier. Uh, make him play the, use the Fiam's um, suction uh, whirlpool ability to make it uh, difficult. Um, fun thing is here is he's effectively taking two Pokemon because of how Pokedoll works, but he's not. Yeah. <laughs> um, so play it. Gramble, 130. Go. Well, I've got no cards in hand. Um, so big old... See. All out, 160. And Shrine of Punishment and adds one more damage. So if it, it ta uh, if Fr Shrine actually takes two more turns, then uh, we'll get the knockout on the on the Zero Aura, uh, which is really good. Um, and mm, yeah, he could, uh, Adrian could win um, like pretty soon in the next few turns, and because uh, he can spread. It even can spread damage with Mew, as mm -hmm. we talked about in, la in the last games. Like spread some damage to Pika, and then let the Shrine tick. Maybe if you are able to recycle it, even you can re just put it back down. Even if uh, Owen decides to bump it, and Owen still needs to knock out uh, four more Pokémon. So um, yeah, he has still a long way to go to win this game. Yeah. So what are you attacking with this turn? Got a lot of options there. I think a lot of it has damage counters on it, though. <laughs> um, Maybe you want to even um, like sacrifice something, so you can maybe. Mm, no, I'm, no, I'm I don't not know sure. It's worth doing, right? Well, yeah, just attack. Just okay. Okay. Hmm. Clearly, he doesn't have much option here. Um, this also sort of make, makes it a seven price card game. Yeah. Um, but well, actually eight. Because it's forcing you to go through two tag yeah, teams. Yeah, two tag teams and the zero are uh, also. And when you're only doing, you know, when you're two hit knockouting, that's a few turns. That's quite a few turns to, to make you kind of uh, run through. As oh, that's. Un I think he draw drew into a lot of supporters right there. Yeah. The Diantha and the, um, the Rosa as uh, well. But the cool thing with Diantha is that he can almost always get into the Dusk Hole with it if he really yeah, needs to. Yeah, if he wants to. But usually, if a card says grab two cards from your discard, you don't want. Like yeah, you don't want to do it to grab a card from discard to get a different one from deck. You want to hopefully have it in discard ready to go. So he, as he actually grabs the snowball and the and the ground ball. Yeah, maybe he would just spread with Mew this turn, or just yeah, or just throw everything away. Okay, he's just passing to force. Oh yeah, shrine takes the knockout on the zero aura. Yep. Because Owen wasn't able to bump it, I was like, yeah, dude, he has like 15 cards in his hand. Surely he would be able to bump the shrine, but he wasn't able to. So, uh, or he didn't want to, maybe. Okay, now, well, see, then this is where the Fion comes in, right? Like, if he didn't have the Fion preemptively benched to play around the doll, yeah, he could have played the Marshall previously, taken the knockout, and not had the Shrine take the KO. Um, so we actually see an awful lot of value from that, as we now see the Whirlpool suction from Owen. Adrian, it is, it's your opponent's choice to what to promote, and it's always tricky going. Well, what can I afford to give you right now? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've got two Zep Striker in play. I guess one of those is better than nothing. Because he has. Adrian already has a sort of stable bot state right now. Mm -hmm. So he can maybe afford to lose one Zep Striker and just maybe, like, Brock's grid the pieces back in later and then set it back up. Or even. Uh, or maybe even just set up the, the uh, third Zep Striker he has in the deck. Mm -hmm. So he is not too afraid, but still taking away the plus four. Um, could be crucial because you just need to sprint into one bad combination of cards, like one really, really bad combination of yeah. cards, and suddenly you are you know that you have to put resources back into your deck or else you will lose. So, yeah, oh, Grand Bull is always like kind of a gamble. I, I feel you have like to live least. right on the edge of what is possible with this deck, right? If mm -hmm. You have to really kind of duck and weave through some really awkward hands, and it is a very it's it's one of those decks that really rewards practicing because you mm -hmm. like basically what you can do with this deck at any given time is draw a combination of between like any, uh, it just draw like sets of four cards off the top mm -hmm. and go right how would I get rid of these like given this scenario like what would I do to get rid of these and just learn how to pr like do that and 
I guess having two Zeb Strikers makes it considerably easier because it's Zeb yeah. Striker into a playable into Zeb Striker. Like back, uh, back in Calm. the day, you would have liked like um, a two instructor Rango and two Macago, yeah. and that would have minimized randomness to a point where uh, it's, it all comes down to just your decisions mm -hmm. and maybe the cards you get off the prize. As There's we actually see, yes, the Fion. Make it. I mean, this is the only way Adrian really keeps the game going. Just um, get it back. And you kind of really kind of forces consistent knockouts turn after turn with prizes. Like it even means that if you go ahead and take, uh, you know, if he goes against the Shedinja, mm -hmm. there's no way of doing that in a turn. But like if he gets the Shedinja, he can't Shedinja because he'll just get Fionn's. It yeah. really like basically guarantees a prize. Yeah, turn. Owen is really preventing that. He knows like Adrian would basically need to Shedinja or like have a sh Pokemon with Shedinja on the bench and the Pokedoll uh, active. To uh, make it worth as we see the knockout being taken on the Zip Striker. And just look just at the deck. Shuffle. shuffle it. Yeah, I don't need any more energy in play, it's fine. So now we're. Also, the Poké Doll is a really good pivot because you can just put it under the deck when it's active. So, yeah, um, yeah really nice. If like we don't have access to any free. Uh, like Adrian doesn't have access to any free retreaters in his deck. So the polka doll works just fine as that. I mean, she didn't just kind of a free retreater, but yeah, but it requires some setup. Versus yeah, it the polka requires doll, setup. Just throw it on. Um, yeah. So See, great catcher being grabbed from the deck. Maybe. Yeah. Um, well, it's time to take some prize cards, right? Yeah. If you take two prize cards this turn, and get a Shedinja ready for next turn, because if you get the Shedinja and the polka doll. You're okay because yes. you just switch into the other one and you go. Still no prize card. Yeah. The better scenario is obviously to move into the polka doll because you probably keep the gramble around then. Yes. But it's a much tidier way of doing things. Is the Rosa letting you grab? Basically, this is a super strong card in here, right? It's any trainer, mm -hmm. but also the Pokemon, which means you can kind of keep ticking through your attackers because they just they're so fragile. Yeah, you I need think it every turn. Adrian's hand is really strong, right? He has. I mean, he doesn't need any energy right now, but he has Stamp and the Great Catcher, so... Yeah, it's a, a big old Stamp to two. Um, I guess it works. You know, you you want to Stamp, Catcher, a little bit of Prey? A little bit of Prey? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Because <laughs> like, the, the Danny on the bench is actually within range, right? Yeah. So if he can get to a second Catcher, mm -hmm. he, he has he takes the win via the, the Danny. He doesn't have to go through the tag teams this way. So um, sprints away the hand. I mean, he doesn't even need to. He oh, doesn't he need. He doesn't. No, no, he does need the full all out, he right? Yeah, he needs the full all out. But it, yeah, if he only does thirty, then he can. Like he will. He will be um, behind on turns on on damage, yeah. right? If he only does thirty, then he m maybe could finish out uh, it off with Mew and Shrine later. But he would it's need to slow. recycle it before and on only has two price cuts left. So, uh, yeah, he ne really switch. needs to do something. See him really hesitating uh, whether yeah. to play the switch. Switch lets him go into his attacker without leaving the poker doll in play, which means. So you can just promote it by a turn later, right? Um, mm -hmm. So this Picarom only with a little bit of health left. Um, See, so yeah, ha just have a quick read. Know what exactly yeah. the card text says. Yeah. So it's just going to be 30. It's yeah. not a KO. It's up to 200. Yeah, uh, that's well, 220. Yeah, uh, that's it's just just short. What we said, right? It's yeah. just not all out is just not enough anymore to yeah. hit the big numbers, which is kind of unfortunate. And you would need to spam Shrine of Punishment even more, but <laughs> your engine takes up so much space in yeah. your deck. Like the he plays four Poke Gear to get to his Elms because he needs them early. Four Rosa because it's just so crucial in keeping the, the chain of attackers going. And um, yeah, all the Pokemon he plays, he plays 24 Pokemon, mm -hmm. which is a huge amount. So it's really hard to fit in any more any stadiums. Um, and even with that, like Pikazek is one of the tech teams that has the lowest amount of HP. So, um, like, it wouldn't even help against something like a Mew and Mewtwo, which has 270. Um, so, yeah, it's it's kind of tough for Grand Bull right now to deal with so uh, with the big HP Pokemon. Switching into Jirachi means I th it makes it me feel that he knows he has to get. So the judge here is really big because we know 
Adrian knows he has the Shininja in hand, which mm -hmm. means he actually gets two turns yes. uh, guaranteed um, to try and take his uh, last knockout, which makes it much, much easier uh, you know, like to take the knockout and then work on another one. Uh, but yeah, actually, he's maybe hesitating over playing it. But maybe Adrian wants to... P like, his Granbo will be knocked out, and then he pops the Shininja, attaches it to Mew, and then Psy powers for the knockout while setting up one of the Granbos on the bench. But then all Owen has to do is just promote the Pikazek, and then there's no way Adrian will be able to knock that out in one hit. Yeah. So... So... Retreat. It's unlucky. Knockout. Yeah. There is the knockout. And... Shuffle the deck again. Yeah. Rotes the Ninkada because he knows he can just use the Shininja ability to uh, pivot it again. Mm -hmm. He's gonna play the Elm. Take the last, uh, take the second to last prize card for Owen. Yeah. And then yeah, go for the Elms. I mean, no. So the the, the turn difficult. has to be stamp. I mean, is there even more than one stamp? This list is so no, tight. No, there's not. There's only one stamp, so it would have to be stamp. Okay. Well, you have to, whatever you take the KO with has to have the Shedinja on it. This yes. turn, right? So you can. There we go. So it's yeah, KO. On the, it's so he uses the Mew. Mm -hmm. Takes th three prize cards from that, and then sets up the remaining damage counter on the Pikachu and Zekrom on the bench. And then he would need another Shedinja on the following turn. He has it in hand already. Yeah. And then Incarda. All right. So and even the Fion here, the Fion just goes into Poké Doll. Mm -hmm. You let him take the Poké Doll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can sense. just basically consistently deny prize cards for the last like these couple of turns to try and squeeze one more KO out of your grambles if you can. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if it works. Does out. he have great catcher in hand? I don't s didn't see great catcher. If no, he's I think deck, the, he's okay. the great catcher from Adrian is already in the discard pile. Yeah, he used it earlier, and there was no resource management after. Okay. So. so there's no there's no gust option available to take the easy last prize. Yes. So now we're looking at. Is there's no way for Owen to, like, double gust? You know, like he can't find a way to get to something that gives him a prize card this turn. Um, yeah, Owen's debating putting the Thundermon in play, but I think I he's think pretty it's fine sure. At this point. He's pr pretty yeah. Maybe if you take out the Mew and then the Mew doesn't isn't recovered, then you can tag Bolt maybe mm -hmm. for six on the next turn. Maybe that's a line of play he could go for. I mean, it, yeah, sure, and just take it the one out on the bench. Mm -hmm. So basically, full, like, if he has the energy here, there's actually an argument just a full blitz for no prize. Yeah. Charge yourself up and go, right, I just KO the Ninkard on the bench. Yeah, I'm not sure if the Brock's Grit is still in the discard pile or it got shuffled back with the Power Pad at some point. No, actually. I don't think it did. There's the Power Pad in the hand, so probably yeah. it didn't. So, yeah, if the Mew goes to the discard pile, it would be pretty tough for Adrian to get it back in one turn. So, um, yeah, you just, as, as Owen, maybe you just go, okay, full blitz to myself, and if you have the knockout, I guess I lose, but if you don't have it, I guess I win. So, yeah. um, you force Adrian to do 200 damage in one turn, which is super, well, super well, tough. his deck can't do. Yeah. There's no way of doing that number. Yeah, I mean, Owen doesn't know, but so, yeah, like... Um so, no prize card taken. Acrobike. Mm -hmm. Another Poke Gear. Just keep taking these cards that you can play. Okay, Rosa. He's playing Rosa. Yeah, but uh, Owen didn't get any energy with the full blitz. So no, so he must, he must have used it all then. Yeah, I guess it uh, has to be an all in the discard pile. Um, but now it's just going to be the same thing again, right? Here comes the Poke Doll. Here comes another Shedinja. But at least force Adrian to take to, to like sequence it properly and then yeah. take the knockouts but with the Granbo. No, but, but no way of attacking. Yeah, he has no no way of attacking. Just uh, just a pass over. And with only a minute or so left on the on, on the timer, it looks <laughs> like either slow. Owen will take take the game or uh, it will end up in a tie if Adrian has well, any way to squeeze like out like the we win. We know Adrian needs basically two turns of attacking. Yeah. Right. Minimum. Yeah, that's true. And every turn you miss of an attack now. This is another turn you have to get your lock on mm -hmm. in terms of prizes. But it becomes a huge problem of, well, there's just not time now to get, like, if time is called, he has two turns. That is it. Yes. And as soon as that's the case, well, he needs both of those turns to be perfect attacks into yeah, you're the, right. the Yeah, you're right. It looks like Owen is going to take this one. but Yeah. So, Volkner off of the Stellar Wish. 
it feels like we're really getting let down by the one prize decks today. Like the one 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 prize uh, oh, deck mirror this isn't we had was hugely like surprising because like when this happens, yeah. the like the format right now just had a load of support for tag teams. Yes. Tag teams are actually really hard for single prizes to deal with because they have so much HP. Yes. And yeah, okay, you trade favorably, favorably, but these tag teams and the GX attacks they have access to often completely flip the game back on uh, on its head. Yes, that's so, true. Um, he yeah, he didn't discard the energy yeah. for retreating, I assume, because there's no zero aura in play, so yeah, he needs oh, okay. to discard the energy. Yeah, sure. Um, which now means that Owen can't attack to <laughs> anytime soon. Yeah, um, but that should be uh, should be no problem because there was no other action in no, between. No, it's fine. So it's whatever. And there are no energies left in Owen's deck. So, so kind of occasionally happens that you kind of slightly on autopilot. Um, yeah. Of like, you, especially at this point in the day, like it's been a, been a lot of Pokemon. Uh, played um, as time is now being called. Um, so we see a Volkner. So this makes Owen turn zero of time. Yes. Uh, so, so yeah, he doesn't he doesn't really need to attack anymore. He just can, can just wait it out and then uh, okay. it's there fine. actually may have been a a uh, time extension that we haven't been talked about for the delay earlier on. There was a uh, discussion at the table. They may okay, have maybe. So it may not be exactly time. We'll have to keep an eye out. Um, As the Pikachu gets promoted, Electro Power, <laughs> another Electro Power, and a pass. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's just, well, I guess I ha like uh, Adrian has to hit with a ground ball now. Mm -hmm. And next to it. Yes. Then he's fine. But there's... Yeah, it's so hard. Actually, he puts the Diantha back in. But if I'm Owen and I see my opponent just put the Diantha back, I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm not taking any knockouts <laughs> anytime soon. Right? Um, especially with no energy in play. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> especially <laughs> that. But like, even if I could, I wouldn't. So So he's going to just take the grits. I mean, at this point, you kind of need to, right? You yeah. poke gear for the Brock's grit. Put your Gramble energy back in. Get yourself kind of set back up again. See if you can just get a turn or so extra of. Yeah, the sprint here had to, has to be. Yeah, it has really to be huge. nuts, basically, right? There is a Dusk Skull in play, which means that the Dusk Skull means that, right, only one of the bits to be right. And in this case, if you get Fairy Gramble, you're very happy. But you yes. also have to then find a way of discarding the other two. Yeah, because as you we see four energy and two ground bolts being shuffled back into the deck. Um, so, yeah. And the sprint has to be really good. Mm -hmm. Right here. It has to basically be two cards, like, like ground ball energy, plus two cards you can immediately throw out, throw away in some combination. Mm -hmm. So sprint. Yeah, make sure the box crit is in the discard. Well, it's gramble, gramble. So oh, there's th a Diantha, he, but he already played the Brock's Grid, so... He, there's no energy. Yes. Pass. Yeah, you can see, you look on his face like, right, well, whiffing that energy has really messed up the, ge uh, messed up the game there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, even, even, like, if he gets the energy on this turn, he can just do 30, and then... Yeah, like, 30 actually sets up the number. No, then the Pika oh, is 10 short, isn't it? Yeah, it's 10, 10 short. short. Um, so, yeah, he had to draw perfectly this turn to uh, get it. As we just see the pass over. Yeah, so Adrian was turn zero there. Um, so now Owen is turn one. Uh, they had a little bit of extra time due to a delay a minute ago. Um, so now... <laughs> it's just... Oh, there's another conversation. Um, happening at the table. Yes. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's happening. The judge seems to be telling both players something. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm also not entirely sure. There's something about the energy, I think, earlier on. I think it was right to the earlier discussion. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, Owen should uh, should lock, uh, have this game locked up. And um, well, yeah. it looks like it, but I'm just seeing what's happened. Like, it seems to be a conversation like, happening at the table. There's something awkward happening. I don't know. Um, as we find out, um, we'll cu quickly cut to us. Yes. Um, as we as we wait, just uh, let it's been a really interesting matchup. Like again, it's it's shown that some of these decks can just just be kind of there, but not quite. Yeah. Um, and it's really unfortunate to see that they're just getting so so close to their plan, mm -hmm. but not over the line. Yeah, they're just missing like the the last little bit to yeah. um, be able to keep up. Maybe if we have a better way next set to search out the basic Pokemon um, for the decks th so that they don't have to... Like, they rely on supporter that much. They rely on supporter to search their Pokemon and also to get back their Pokemon and to keep their deck running, like, in Rosa and Elms and Diantha and Brock's Grid. <laughs> like, they're all supporter cards. And um, at some point, like, you only can play one supporter card per turn. So <laughs> you limit it in that way. Um, if, if you would make the, if the one prize could decks could be a little bit, just a little bit yeah, faster. It's all it is. It's, a, it's the smallest margins, and this is where like a single set with like some decent-ish support completely flips these decks around. Yeah. Right. So we've seen a few tag team decks like so Malamar was a single prize attacker deck that's now gone. Well, actually, there's enough support for tag en engine stuff that I'm going to go throw these things in too. Mm -hmm. But if that's not always necessary, then. Like actually, if I can afford to play the tag engine and a few bits and pieces, there's enough there. There's enough good tag teams. Yeah. That actually we can get enough value with the added risk. Sure, we're we're going to change our plan. We're going to commit to this as a, as a different uh, strategy. And I think that's a really weird place to be in a format of trying to work out what exactly is going on in terms of c are we at the line? Are we just b b in front of the line of like is this deck going to fully function? And it looks like today looks like it's going to be um, a. Uh, so actually, the game is uh, finished. I'm not entirely sure what the result was. Um, we'll have to check. Yeah, we get information. Um, in one but we'll, second. we'll let you know in the chat um, momentarily. Um, but we'll s cut to a break. Um, yes. There's going to be a quick turnaround between rounds as we're waiting for that game to finish, mm -hmm. and we will be back very soon. So don't bye go bye. away.